What's an Aces storage locker? We find out with Frank Munoz. It's a story of mice and men. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. I am one of your co-hosts, Michael Branvold, and as always, I'm joined by that great rock journalist in his own mind, Mitch LaFon. World renowned. World, World renowned. renowned. We've got to remember, it's in his contract. World renowned <laughs> rock journalist, Mitch LaFon. And, and, and that, that world renowned real estate agent, Tommy Summers. So, so guys, let's 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 just jump right into it because obviously everybody's sitting here going, "Well, who's the fourth guy with you?" So, I'm really excited to introduce <coughs> Frank Munoz, who is to to many Kiss fans, they would probably recognize his name as the co-producer of Anomaly. He was deeply involved with Ace Frehley all around the Anomaly, the Anomaly release, recording the whole thing, and. Uh, Frank is actually local here in San Francisco with me, and we've we've known each other for Old a little friends, bit yeah. here. Yep. Friends, so, yeah. um, you know, I just said, listen, it would be great to have you sit down and just tell some stories. And yeah, and, and, and I was going to say, Frank upped it one better and said, well, let me show some pictures. Yeah, you know, first of all, guys, uh, thanks for having me on the show. Um, I'm a big fan. Of, I've been watching your uh, the. Eddie Cannon stuff and, and the, the Kulik interview Kevin and Kevin Valentine, love it all. I mean, it's great. It, it's it's great to hear the inside scoop of, of you know uh, about this band that we all grew up with and we all loved and we still talk about them. We're obviously doing the show. And uh, the one thing I was telling Mike was, uh, it's great that we're all talking and everything's seen, but let's show some visual. So I have all these photos that a lot of people have never seen before and some video. And uh, you know, let's have a good time with it and, and uh, tell some stories. Yeah. So, 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 guys, what 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 you, the viewers, are going to experience here is as Frank is telling a story, that photo is going to pop up on the screen for you. So you're going to be able to see these photos as Frank took them and as he's describing the story about what was going on there. Maybe we'll have some questions about it, but Frank has given us a whole bunch of photos, and uh, we're going to end this show with a very cool video clip as well. A video very clip cool. that has never been seen before. So you need to make sure you stick around to the end of this. So so let, let's let's just get started on this, Frank. So we've yeah. got a series of photos you gave us that are basically Ace's storage locker. Yeah, okay, well, let's start. I was, uh, I've was i been friends with Ace since 1992. I was introduced to him by Richie Scarlett, who is a dear friend of mine. And uh, I met him back then. I, I was friends with Ace throughout the uh, uh, the unplugged taping and up into the reunion tour. Um, I was there when he. I stayed at his place in Los Angeles with him when uh, he was getting ready to do the reunion tour in uh, January of '96. Been friends with him all this time. Uh, got reacquainted with him in uh, 2008. I've been working with the uh, Metallica guys for about 10 years at the time. Uh, out here in San Francisco, and um, what, he what, called, what, what were you doing for the Metallica guys? I was I was pretty much a jack of all trades with them. I uh, you were the Tom, you were the Tommy Thayer for Metallica. I would well, <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, literally helping them out with uh, I was there from the uh, Reload record all the way up until uh, Death Magnetic, and uh, did every you know worked in the studio, went on tour, uh, worked at the guys' houses on their separate projects. Um, and just kind of did everything around, you know, but that was what I was doing. Ace calls me up in uh, 2008. I hadn't talked to him, uh, boy, since the New York Steel show and, um, said, Hey, I'm playing San Francisco tomorrow. Are you coming to the show? Uh, you know, come on by the hotel. And we, we went out to dinner and that's a, that's a story all unto itself, which well, I'll get to later. But, um, I guess he was having problems with his tour manager and, and some of the people that were working with him. And he just said, hey, listen, do you want to jump ship with Metallica and come and work with me? You know, I'm, I'm trying to get a record together. And I said, well, you know, let me let me get out there in New York. Let me see what's going on. Um, so he flew me out to his place in uh, in Austin, New York, which is up, up upstate in Westchester. And um, is this the place that was just foreclosed? That's the place that just got foreclosed. And um, I went up there. 
and, and my first thing was, okay, Ace, you want to do this record. Do you have any money? Right? And we all kind of know the answer to that. I mean, I know KISS fans are, are, are kind of have their own idea of, well, he was in this huge band. He must have a million dollars stored somewhere. Not the case. I mean, he, he basically sold a lot of his rights back to Gene and Paul. And um, I, I said, well, let's, let's do this. Why don't we go into your storage locker? Let's see what you got. And this is, you know, Gene and Paul had just done the, um, the uh, Butterfields auction and made a lot of money on that. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, let, let, I brought the book with me, you know, the Butterfields book with me. And I said, okay, this is what they were selling. Let's go through your stuff and let's see what you got. And maybe we do something at Butterfields. Maybe we do something on eBay. Maybe we do something just, you know, we'll get a website going and we'll make some money so we can go and proceed and make the record. So th this is basically how he financed getting Anomaly started was his, his collection of KISS stuff. I mean, this, so what I did is all these photos were my inventory. I took all these photos. I went in there, went through all of his stuff and inventoried everything and then started calling different collectors rock collectors kiss collectors and said look i'm doing this thing with ace are you interested in purchasing this item or this item or this item?" and literally everything sold i mean he kept a couple of things that were left but pretty much everything got sold and that's how we financed the, the anomaly record cool so um, so let, let's let's uh, start with the very first photo here and just right. take us through each photo and you know, tell us what little story there might be to each one. All right. Well, uh, we're starting at the top one. This is uh, one of his Australian tour 1980 uh, jackets. Um, he had a lot of these things in boxes. Uh, the silver one is, I believe, from the reunion tour. Uh, the Casablanca jacket. Uh, just stuff, you know, he, that, that one. All these had like, his name on it, you know, Ace or, or, or embedded somewhere. Um, the um, I mean we're just going through these. So quick. so 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 these are just so people know these are often promotional jackets that are yes. given to the band, band members by whoever's promoting the show, the the local record company. Yeah. Um. You know they're they're kind of just tchotchke gifts. You know even Kiss still gets them. You'll see photos like Kiss or any band backstage at a venue with hockey jersey for the local team right. and their names on. That's that's what this type of stuff is. Did, but, did, did Ace ever say, I mean, did he ever really wear any of these things, or it was just sort of like he took it that one time and it's been in a box forever? No, no. I mean, some of the stuff he wore, I mean, you could see it was definitely worn. Um, he had stuff in the pockets. He obviously had me look through the pockets to see if there's any little gems left in the 70s and 80s in there, little, little dime bags. <laughs> box <around>. lying around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> any, dead, any dead presidents. <laughs> something, something sitting in there. So we, I went through all the pockets and everything to see if there's anything cool in there. Uh, the coolest stuff, obviously, was all the stuff that came from the Casablanca coin days. Obviously, they, you know, that's the one thing I've learned doing all this stuff is how important a coin and his people and Sean Delaney and all those guys were to the Kiss machine because the cool stuff was the stuff from the seventies and early eighties. Well, so uh, so, you know. so so let, before we 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 run through all the jackets here, I mean the yep. ones that. The, the the blue one with the Ace of Hearts on it. Yes. I, I believe he used that. On, didn't he use that on a video for during the Comet days or something? I thought that was... I was going to say, yeah. and, and maybe Mitch or Tommy would know better, but yeah, I recognize, vaguely recognize that as a, a a jacket that Ace wore in his solo career. Yeah. Yeah. Can't, yeah. can't tell you which, which one. It looks very so. familiar to a video, but I'm, I'm blanking on it right now. I think it's from the, the second album, though. Yeah, someone will know. Someone somebody will know. Will know. Yeah, so, and somebody so, will criticize us for not knowing. No, they're, they're, yeah, it's because we're not real fans, Mitch. So then the sure. next one I find kind of really interesting. It, it's the front and back of a white jacket. Yeah. August 1977. Yes. This is from L.A. Forum, right? The L.A. Alive Forum. Two. Alive 2. Yes. Three uh, nights. Three nights. And he actually had in the little <laughs> bundle inside of that jacket were unused tickets and a uh, parking pass to the LA Forum. So 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 we'll move on here to the photo. So here's a photo there of you go. the yep. four tickets for the LA Forum Alive 2 show. So what what were these? Were these some tickets that that Ace had requested to give to somebody that he never got to them or, or? Fa uh, there, there was probably some f family or friend out there who was waiting outside of the forum for these tickets and they never showed up. I mean, that's pretty much what it was. There was a parking pass with it. Um, 
Yeah, it was. It's it's definitely a cool piece. I mean, if you look at the price, I believe it's nine dollars and fifty cents to get in yeah. there. <laughs> that's pretty. Cool. I also like the fact that the uh, ticket shown is my birthday, so <laughs> August twenty seventh. So there you go. Well, I, listen, if I would have known you, Mitch, I would have sold it to you. What can I tell you? I, <laughs> so, I didn't know you back then. So let's but, move on to the next piece, which a lot of people looking at this what looks like a metal wristband may not have any idea what this is we got two photos of this wristband it looks yeah. like a top photo and, and a bottom side photo so tell us about this well this is what ace told me was a piece of the alive one costume and as you see there's a missing uh, ruby in there a, a pearl or something that was missing in there i was looking in every box for it i couldn't find it, it that, that's how I, I found it it literally randomly in a box i mean this is uh, uh, Ace has never been known to be much of an organized type of guy, so I went through all this stuff, and it was, you know, it was crazy. You'd find 16 magazines, you'd find these unused tickets, you'd find, uh, uh, there was a box of videotapes. There was actually one box of videotapes, I don't know if it survived that flood or not, but uh, it, it, the label on it said, L.A. Forum, Alive 2. So I don't know if that is a video of the show. I know that that's never been released, but it was sitting there. I never got to look through it. I mean, we didn't have that much time um, to kind of go through everything. But and, um, and, and, and just so people get a, a, a picture of this. So this storage locker that these were in, this was, if, if I recall, there was a fo an aerial photo of, of his house yes. that was foreclosed. And there was this big green metal storage. Okay, no. Was that, so is that, was that this? Okay, so you go to, you, when you went to his house, uh, when you pulled into the driveway, there was a big, like a stone building. That was his studio. That's where all the stuff was stored. That's where he recorded all of <coughs> most of Anomaly. Um, he had all of his stuff in there. Uh, that, was the, that was the one studio house. Then you went up the road. May I ask you one question about the studio yeah, house? Is sure. that also where he was doing The Elder? And I mean, is that the studio that goes far back into no. the Kiss day? No. no. Okay. No, no. He got. I believe he got this property uh, after Psycho Circus. I believe around that that ninety nine, two thousand, somewhere oh, around okay. that. Okay, perfect. So no, it wasn't the Connecticut house that had the underneath. No, that was gone. He's he he actually had photos of that. He sold it to some doctor or something like that who still has it and it's still there. And I believe they changed that studio, the underground studio, into some family game room or something. So I mean, the place right. still exists. It's out there. Um, okay. So, but so, no, so 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 this this stuff was this this was stored inside of a house then? It was stored on like the basement of the studio. Okay. That's where it was all at. It was and it was the the, the, the crazy part about it was there was like a like a sewage tank that would go right next to it. And I kept going, I go, does this ever flood? Because it was just like I'm like you might want to get rid of you might want to move this or get it above ground because this is uh, you know any anything that could happen a flood or anything like just the water would just rise up uh it was crazy i mean it was crazy stuff in there i would i would pull these tapes out and in two inch reels and you know there'd be mice droppings all over the place and it's funny because i think most kiss fans probably think that they keep these things in climate controlled rooms or or in vaults and and you know, I, I, I can't speak for Gene and Paul. I don't know how they keep their stuff. Well, we know how Gene stuff. keeps it because you see it in his office. <laughs> see it in his office. Nowhere near like that. It was nothing like that. It was literally just boxes and boxes. The first time I went over to that house was in 2001 uh, when he was rehearsing for the New York Steel show. And, right. and Rich, Richie Scarlett invited me up there, and I went up there and, and, and hung out with the guys as they rehearsed. And I remember walking around. that The studio hadn't been built yet. Um, it was still all under construction. And I walked to the bottom of that, of that little storage room, and there were these pizza boxes, like Luigi's pizza boxes from uh, the White Plains or something. <laughs> and underneath the pizza boxes was the smoking guitar <laughs> sitting there. And I'm just like, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I grabbed the guitar, and I, I said, is there a case for this? I mean, is there something? <laughs> literally sitting on the floor. There it was, smoking guitar. I mean, basically, yeah. it sounds like he had no clue what he even had there to begin with. No, he, he he knew what it was. It was a matter about keeping it in, in a well, good no, condition. Well, no, no, but, uh, but uh, not, not, not the guitar, but I mean in all of the boxes of stuff. Yeah. He probably oh, no. had no idea what was in all these boxes. No clue, no clue. There was, there was one box I found that had a, a, a Beatles poster on, in it. An old, old, old beat-up Beatles poster. And he said, that's my poster that I had in my room when I was a kid in the Bronx. 
And I said, you know, you got to frame this, man. You know, you got you to put this in, and save it. And he's like, ah, I'll get to it when I get to it. Yeah, can I ask you one thing? Yeah. Were you a Kiss fan? I mean, were you, as you're going Huge. through this, are you thinking, going, oh, my God. What? Or he's like, eh, whatever. Well, yeah, Frank, now, give us a little bit of your, your Kiss history. I mean, you ran a fanzine. I, I did a fanzine er, in the early, early 90s called Kiss Heaven with my okay. friend Tim Healy. Yep. And a uh, uh, huge, huge fan. Huge okay. fan. But, but know, this was like a wet dream for you. I mean, th this was like ex more than exciting. Well, it, it, very exciting. Uh, okay. You know, I mean, it, it's as the years have gone by and, and I, I did some work with, with, with the Kiss guys in, in the 90s, you know, it, it wears off. I mean, right. you know, I'm still a big fan, but, but it was one of those things where I'm kind of looking at it and going... Uh, you know, I, when you see when you pull the mat, the the you go and see the wizard and you see what's behind all the all the stuff and you, know, you kind of lose it a little bit with, with right. the, you know and and uh, yeah but I mean still as you're pulling out the jacket from the forum and stuff you're going wow this is really cool I mean oh no, absolutely absolutely but the the one thing I was thinking of at the time was this is going to sell really well I mean my, the goal at that point was let's get some money to do the record. Because I really, I was listening to the demos, and I'm like, this could be really, this could be something really special for Ace. You know, how, how come no record company advanced money, or, or was it to was the plan to do it more solo so that you had more creative control? Why was yeah. not somebody stepping in and saying, here's ten thousand bucks? He wanted he wanted to do it on his own and then okay. go and sell the product, which we did. We went and we, we, gotcha. we hooked up with a, a company called Rocket Science. In right. Encino, California, and they did a, a fabulous job on the record. And uh, you know, there was an advance, and there was it. But that, that's another story. We can get into that later. But uh, later. Okay. I uh, have a question. I'd love to ask Frank. Can absolutely. you tell us what? How much money do you need to make a record, and what? What's the money for? For all uh, you know, for people that don't really know anything about the recording process. Um. Well, very open question. Yeah. That, that basically, what. The first thing you have to do is obviously, do you have a recording studio? You know, that's the main okay. thing. Okay, which At, he did or didn't have. They, a Ace had a recording studio. Okay, so okay. so the, the main thing for Ace was paying an engineer to okay. come in and record. We had three different engineers that he that he had hired to okay. make the record, um, and then we got to the point when when the record was done and it was uh, the final tracks were made, is taking it to somebody to mix it. Um, while I was working with Metallica, uh, they had put out Guitar Hero, a Metallica Guitar Hero, and yeah. uh, it sounded, I listened to it, I downloaded it at the guys' house, and I installed it and everything, at you know, Lars's house and everything, it sounded amazing, and I said, well, Ace, why don't we do, why don't we go down to, to, to L.A., go and meet with the Guitar Hero people, maybe they are interested in mixing it, right, and, mm -hmm. and then we do maybe okay. a game. We do a Ace Frehley. Who who is the biggest you know guitar hero than Ace Frehley? We'll do an Ace Frehley guitar hero game. Get it mixed by them. We'll do it all in one and we'll put it out. They basically guitar hero basically said, look, we're not in the game of mixing. That that's not our business of mixing music. But I can tell you who did, and he pointed me out to these cats, uh, Marty Fredrickson and Anthony Fox, um, and I met with them. And they're big, huge Kiss fans, and right. they listened to the music. And literally on the first, we gave them pain in the neck as a, like a, like a sampler, like mix this song, which which was the, the mix, the rough was just really just horrible. Mix this song and see what happens. And I said, do me a favor, listen to Love Gun. I've always stated to me that Love Gun is the best produced, sounding sonically sounding Kiss record of all time. All my favorite. Okay. Uh, okay. It might not be the, the most important record in Kiss, uh, Kiss's history, but to me, it sounded the best. And you can pop it in right now and, and listen to it, and it sounds fantastic. Um, I said, use that as an A-B. Um, right. So they did Pain in the Neck. It sounded fantastic. Ace, we found the guys, and that was it. That was the best. You know, th th we hired them. And okay. uh, obviously, they're fantastic guys. They work with, with Aerosmith and, and Foreigner, and, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Anthony mixed and recorded the the new the Newstead record, the Jason Newstead record that just came out, and and, 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 and the new Jeff Tate. Little, yeah, I was going to say as a little plug, the new Jeff Tate Queensrike single. Correct. Yes. The, oh, the, cool. We, we we helped on that as well. Um, so so we found the right guys. Obviously, they they didn't come cheap, so we needed the money for that. Um, but um, that's pretty much what the what the game plan was. You know, we wanted to get we wanted to do if we're going to do a record with Ace after twenty years, which Trouble Walking was the last record he did. It had to be good. And right. we...
Everybody, we uh, we apologize. We had a little bit of a technical difficulty, something that unfortunately is always out of our control. Thank you to the good old internet, and in this case, Comcast. Thanks, um, Comcast. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Comcast. So let let's go back to this uh, armband from yes. from a live one. This is this is just you know it looks really cool. Uh, it, it, it was really cool. Believe me, I tried it on. Um, it was. Uh, I was looking for that other little piece there, so we can we can make that final. We can put it together as a, an alive one uh, piece. Um, couldn't find it. Uh, we were going through. I was going through all of his boxes, and there was. I mean, where was I going to find this thing? I mean, you know, between all, all the other stuff that was in there. Um, I don't know what. I think he still has it. I don't know if he sold it or not. But that's one of the pieces we actually didn't sell because it wasn't complete. So was was there? I'm assuming you like you grabbed this out of a box. There was nothing yeah. else in that box related to the Alive One costume. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, and you were Mike. I don't know if you got this part in, but you were saying in the aerial view of Ace's compound that he had there. So he had the studio on the bottom, and then you walked. You went up a ramp. Um, he, he had his little living headquarters, his little house that was there. It's very very modest, very small. Uh, and then you're talking about a green container. Okay, right. that was. That's actually a sea can right. that I guess he got from stuff coming back from the Psycho Circus or Farewell. I think they played overseas sometime in 99 or something like that. So that was a sea can that actually was delivered to his house, and he ended up keeping it there. And uh, now, again, East Coast, you're talking humidity in the summer. You're talking and, what, and, what, and what was in it? Okay, well, this is, that's what I'm getting at. So okay. he... he 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 had in there boxes and boxes of clothes, clothes his his old clothes from the seventies and eighties, Jeanette's old clothes, just a bunch of different stuff in there. The one thing that he said he he swore he had, which I I spent one Sunday afternoon looking through it to see if, if he had. He said he had the original costume from the old Fillmore show, I guess from seventy three, I believe that was. Um, it was the one with the, the lightning bolts and stuff. He said he still had it. He didn't sell it, and he wanted to get that piece out. I looked and looked and looked, could not find it. Went through everything in there. Now the cool, the cool piece he had in there, he is he had the Kiss pinball machine from '79, which the little serial number said zero zero four. So he had the fourth one, I believe, of, of that. Right. Um, so uh, unused, mint condition, just sitting there outdoors. Well, let me let me ask you. I can only imagine how musty that container must have smelled. Unbelievable, and it was. I was there. Uh, was it, uh, October of '08, so it was still humid. It hadn't gotten cold yet, and it was. Uh, yeah, it was. It was blistering out there. The other funny thing that he had on that in the compound is, I believe he won in a poker game a, a truck, like a like a semi truck. He had a semi truck <laughs> that was literally covered with weeds on the compound. And I, I, he wanted to get rid of it because I believe he was leaking diesel nice. <laughs> on his compound. It was just sitting right there. I go, what's the story with the with the semi? Because I, I wanted in a poker game. Wow! That's now, just if so he's bizarre. winning semis, imagine what he's losing. Um, uh, back to the costume piece. Yeah. I always assumed that Kiss had a warehouse where all the costumes were kept. Were there any other costume? I mean, did he have a pair of boots? Did he have? I mean, did he have other costume bits at home? Now, okay, interesting uh, uh, question on that one. <coughs> he, did, he the only costume that he had left was the farewell costume, the one he used on the farewell tour, and he used on, um, I guess, the closing of the Olympics. Right. And he had actually used it on that Dunkin' Donuts commercial he had done. In we, we, we we've got a picture. We'll, we'll we'll throw that photo right. up. So that that was the. To your knowledge, that's the last time Ace Frehley ever wore Kiss makeup and a Kiss yes. costume was the Dunkin' Donuts commercial. Th that's what he said, yes. And, and there's photos of him with that. And that, I believe that was in 2007 or 2008 or something like that. So that was the only costume, uh, authentic costume piece that he had. That was it. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So, so let's, um, let's move on. So the next photo looks like a carnival prize. Uh, a, a glass mirror 1976 Kiss Bicentennial U.S. Tour thing. Yeah. Um, a, 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 again, another piece that I found just underneath some boxes that he had. I mean, uh, you got to remember what he did have. He had all of his gold and platinum records. Had all that stuff there. Uh, horrible condition. 
Um, well, here, so so let let's let we'll we'll jump to that real quick here, and then great. we'll come back to the storage locker. So there's a photo called Ace New York Studio Wall. Yes, right. That is that is the inside of his studio at the at that house, and um, I believe the story is the, his band at the time, uh, Scotty Coogan and Anthony Esposito and Derek Hawkins. Um, decorated his place with it. They were in there one, one, one day, and they just said, you know, you, you got to put these on the wall. And they did all that stuff. They put it up right. there and decorated it. And, uh, and you notice the labels of one of them has fallen off. <laughs> well, the ones that are up there are actually the ones that were in the best condition. I mean, there was a lot of them out there that was just, just beat to death. So, I mean, the, so you told me this, but tell the story of where these were stored before the band members pulled them out to hang them. Uh, well, some of them were stored underneath his sink in his bathroom. He was just, just lying around when you walk into his bathroom, in the studio bathroom. They were just on the floor. Um, again, you know, if the toilet overflows, bye-bye uh, a live one gold record. I mean, what can I tell you? You know, I mean, it's... See, it, that's kind of just, that'll just kill people to hear that story. Uh, yes. Yeah, you that know... I mean, nuts. <laughs> it, it, it's... it's it, it's it's sad. I mean, it's sad when you when you if you're a Kiss fan. I mean, look, I, I've I worked with two of the. Well, it's biggest. not just a Kiss fan. There's a whole psychology there because I mean, he doesn't seem to appreciate his success or appreciate his accomplishments, and so that there's a whole psychological thing that that you could study there, and it, it, you know, there's it's interesting. It's sort of an insecurity or some kind of weird thing going on. Or, or, or look, or, or you're just a messy person. I mean, you're just not. Uh, some people yeah, some, like yeah. That. Some people just are not not organized and neat. Yeah, yeah right. but it sure. shouldn't take more than an hour or so to grab a bag of nails and a hammer and hang the shit on the wall because chances are nothing will happen to it there. But 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 no. But I mean, I, but, but but to Frank's point, earthquake. some people that and listen, I I I went to Ace's apartment in um hollywood once i can't remember if it was during psycho circus or farewell and frank can attest to this i mean he already did you walk in and the place is just like a bomb went off yeah i mean i went i went into his little den where he had all of his computers and you know as we we take our macs and we take care of them and we've got them plugged in he's got these things ripped apart i mean he's customizing them he's rebuilding them he had one of these Macs, and at the time it was probably a top-of-the-line Mac G4. Yep. The case was taken off, and he had literally a knife like this big, like a hunting knife, jammed yep. in there holding some wires together so the thing could run. Uh, I mean, it's I, just that's Ace. That's Ace. That's him. He, that's one of his hobbies. He loved putting stuff together. I mean, uh, in in that storage area, he had a little workspace where he would go through all of his guitars, take them apart, his amps, take them apart, just doing crazy stuff. That was a hobby of his. You know, that's what he he liked to do. Um, I, I, here's one that'll blow a lot of people away. The the one piece that that I was really uh, disappointed at that was just kind of sitting there. As you walked around the corner into his little office that he had, and um, on the wall, underneath a heating vent that would that would you know heat up the place in the middle of the winter, was the uh, original painting from the '78 solo record, without a frame, without glass, without just literally the piece, the painting, the canvas, stuck, the canvas stuck to the wall, underneath this heating duct. And I said to him, I go, I go, I go, man, you got, you got to, you got to put this in a frame. This is, this is a part of rock history. I mean, you know, you had a, the biggest solo record of the guys in 78 and, um, you know, you should, you should treasure this thing. He's like, uh, again, we'll get to it later. There you go. That's, that was wow. response. Never, so, never, never got to it. So, oh. so let, let, let's jump back into the storage photos. So yeah. there's another jacket photo here that I think a lot of fans are going to go. That's kind of like the holy grail kiss jacket. Yes. It's the Japan Tour 1977 with the yes. tiger on it. Yeah. And I mean, this is like yeah. pristine mint condition. Yes. Yes. I believe he wore that, uh, uh, was that in some of those, uh, the Japanese magazines when they were out there. Um, right. Did he? Did he? I don't know. You guys might know this. Did he wear it in the uh, the Alice and Steel uh, interview as well? The TV one, yeah. I believe yeah. he wore on that one. Uh, more cool stuff. Um, th that piece 
uh, as well as if we can move over to the one, the, the, the Japanese robe. Yeah, so we'll skip right. forward here. So skip down a little bit, guys, and there's, uh, let's see, it is uh, number 1595. It's a front and back of a Japanese kimono. Yeah, a, a, a good friend of mine out here in California um, actually purchased, was pretty much the one who purchased the most items. Um, he got those two jackets. He, he got the uh, Budokan guitar, the, the one that he used uh, for recording Rock and Roll Over and Love Gun and the solo record and everything he had done all the way up until uh, he used it to record Anomaly as well. Um, he got that guitar. He got the Blue Sparkle guitar, um, the New York Groove guitar. Um, and, and the cool thing is, is he's... Qu quickly, though, yeah. how, without being indiscreet for the guy who bought them, but how much yeah. does, a, does the jacket go for? I mean, is this a $20,000 thing or is it like 500 bucks? Well, I mean, the one thing you got in ballpark. Uh, well, he 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 pretty much th this this uh, this guy uh, this like collector uh, bought it in a in a lot, you know. In a lot. It, so if you get in a lot, it's actually going to be a little bit less uh, money than it. But you're talking. I mean, you're talking high. Yeah. Five figures, six figures, high figure, low six figures. You know, I mean, uh, let's put it this way. With that purchase, with all that stuff, we had the money to finish <clears throat> Anomaly, and and Ace had the money to um, pay his mortgage at the time and, wow. and get stuff. I mean, it was, we were doing all right. I mean, it was, it was, everything was cool and everything was fine. And, um, so one that's, sale, six numbers. That's, that's, that's pretty good. Oh, absolutely. And, and there's, how, how many items in there? I mean, is, that, is this for like just four pieces or is, it like the, lot, is the lot like 50 pieces? Or just, just to sort of... Yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was uh, the guitars were, were sold in like a, a lot of three. And, and and then the the uh, the the jacket and the robe, um, and then there was some other other stuff thrown in there. I mean, some of the Ace's personal stuff from a coin. Um, did, uh, did, did, did Ace at least take a picture for free? Oh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, and I, he invited he invited uh, my friend over to his house and was very cordial and and uh, showed him around and played him some of the demos of Anomaly and and uh, you know okay. look. It, it, Ace can be a sweetheart when he wants to be. That's not that's not a problem. He's like he can you know I mean it's it's up to him. It's his deal and and uh, you know at the time, um, you know he he was very appreciative of of, of the sale and it, it made him some money. So the kimono is uh, probably from like the Music Life yeah. magazines. That, that and there's there's on the lapel there's uh, the makeup stains on it as well. The, the the grease paint, the silver grease paint. So it's a cool piece. I mean it's going to be. Yeah, I see that. Um, there, there's going to be there's word that I'm hearing that there's going to be a little uh, a museum being opened up here in, in California to show that stuff, and I'll let you guys know if that happens. And and uh, yeah, an Ace cool. museum or a Case museum? It, it, well, it's going to be yes. more of a of a rock and roll museum, and it's going to be gotcha. a, little, a little section devoted to Ace. Gotcha. Uh, okay. And, and all of his stuff. So uh, there's talk. I mean, I'm hearing there's talk about it. We'll, we'll see, and uh, I'll definitely let you guys know if, if that happens. So but. let's look at this other real cool piece: the the stained glass Monopoly board. Very cool. I, I love that piece myself. That was uh, uh, the story was Ace told me there was only five of them made for right. the four band members and for Bill Coin, and stained glass Monopoly set. And if you go just go through the photos, there's Ace behind bars. Uh, in one yeah, of them, a Ace is is basically in, on Monopoly. When you go to jail, well, Ace is the character in jail. <laughs> Ace is right. the character in jail, exactly. Yeah. And then and then there's uh, uh, the pieces all have something to do with uh, either Kiss. Cobalt Hall. Or, yeah, it's all about Kiss, and uh, very cool. It was very very cool. I, I I don't we that one I didn't sell, so I don't know if that was uh, he still has that piece or not. And uh, right after that, we'll show a couple photos here of the key to Cadillac, Michigan. Another cool piece. The, 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 yeah, the Cadillac, Michigan key to the city. Uh, again, sitting in a box. That was, that was sitting in a box somewhere with a bunch of videotapes and stuff like and that. And you can tell there's a big scratch right across the writing. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, look, if, if I found anything that was in mint condition, uh, I was surprised. You know, I was definitely surprised. There was some stuff that were in bags and stuff like that that probably were sealed since the late 70s. So um, yeah. so then after that, we've got what looks like maybe a crew shirt from the Alive 2 at Los Angeles Forum. Yep, yep. He had a bunch of that stuff as well. Uh, again, just, just random stuff piled in. 
Uh, I found I don't have the photos of him, but you know, he had Madison Square Garden tickets from '77 and '79 that were unused uh, passes. Um, you know, random guitar picks. I mean, that's the one thing that Ace had in that in that house was there were guitar picks scattered everywhere, <laughs> like mouse droppings. <laughs> like mouse drop it, everywhere. You know, and I don't know what years they were, but some of them looked like they were very old, and some of them looked better from the farewell tour. Um, well, Frank, I'd like to touch on something though before we yes. go any further. Sorry, Mike, yeah. I didn't no, want to okay. interrupt you, but um, speaking of the warehouse and the, and the different items that he had, and I know we don't have any photos of this. Could you just either. touch on what you believe with again. regards to audio recordings? So, can you say that again, Tommy? I lost your audio there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah the audio is dropping out, Tommy. Hmm. I can. I, I, is I, this I better? Fine. Okay. Just, uh, I, I was just say wondering. It again. Say it again. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering if you could share with everybody what you believed he had from an audio and video perspective that you never had a chance to actually really go through, and you don't know if it still exists. <coughs> you mean you mean as far as material and, and drive and, and for him to make this record? Is, is that no, no. I'm sorry. What we were talking like we were talking about before we started this today. You had mentioned that you had found some you know reel to reels and different things like that yeah, that were oh, in yeah, that yeah. storage. Yeah, so in, in the storage area, he had the uh, two-inch reels uh, going back to his solo record, um, the uh, Dynasty stuff, Unmasked, The Elder. Uh, the, the, I guess what the story with The Elder was that Bob Ezrin would s send tapes back and forth to them, and, and Ace would do it in his, in his Connecticut uh, studio. All that stuff was there. Uh, all the original uh, at least Comet stuff, all the demos, uh, outtakes, and stuff like that, all exist. I mean, they were there. Now, okay. that was in 2008, 2009. Again, I don't know uh, with that flood if, if those got damaged or anything. Um, there was a, a fellow out here in, in Los Angeles that wanted to uh, transfer everything to digital so we would have it as yeah. a record. Didn't happen. Just did, 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 Ace didn't want to leave leave uh, his property, and unfortunately, I, I don't know what's gonna you know that would be, it would make a great box set. I can tell you that. Oh yeah, you know absolutely, especially the elder with the alternative guitar solos and the different mixes. People there, would go nuts for that. There point. was a total of about twenty six reels down there, and they were in their original cases, and they were just sitting right there in the shelf. And 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 again, just so people know, you know, two inch reel to reel tapes like that generally need to be taken care of and stored properly right yeah. you know because humidity uh, kills you, them. You, yeah they, you need it's got to be in a, in a controlled environment so right. throwing so it in your basement and just storing it in a basement even if there isn't a flood right could damage Probably them. damage yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. uh, without a doubt and and that's why it was it was essential to get them transferred that's what i wanted to do i also wanted to transfer a lot of his vhs tapes because uh, who knows what's on there? You know, I, I I didn't get a chance to go through all this stuff. He had a lot of uh, the little eight millimeter uh, reels and sixteen millimeter uh, film as well. Um, but one thing I did start doing was he had a box that was full of photos, S photos all the way from his childhood, and uh, I spent a couple of nights just scanning them, just putting them in the scanner and going one at a time, one at a time. We posted some of them on uh, his website uh, on acefairly.com when that first came out. And just to show the fans and stuff like that, um, yeah, I think he might. Awesome. I think he might have used some of that stuff on his book as well um, right. that, that he did. But I mean, that, again, literally no organization. It was just a stack of photos in the box. That's it. See, and that's so hard to hear as a Kiss fan because it's like, God darn it! I would love to have heard that. Not that we'd ever get to hear it because I'm sure that <laughs> the minute he wanted to do something with it, that'd be the end of that. But if they're going to end up remastering stuff. What a cool thing to do with some of those albums to add those alternative takes. Uh, and, and I was, you know, my idea was why don't we use those as bonus tracks uh, for Anomaly in uh, Europe, Australia. Oh, Japan. yeah. You know, just add one or two songs. I mean, there, there, was, uh, there was some of them had, that had notes on them. It might have been Ezrin's writing um, that had some Ace uh, songs from The Elder that I had never heard of before. Um, what about the legalities? I mean, don't those recordings belong to either Mercury, which is now Universal, or Kiss Inc.? I mean, doesn't it belong to the Kiss head office? Or 
You know, that's that that's, that's that lawyers have to go through. I don't know. Right, okay. I mean, but, but Ace. I mean, Ace had those. I mean, I guess you know, if you if you have it in your possession, you know, I mean, you you, you definitely own the tape. I don't know if you can go out there and actually sell those songs. Sell but, right. But, uh, yeah. But it's just I, it's I, so <clears throat> it's frustrating because it's like, why didn't somebody from the Kiss office or Gene and Paul, whomever, you know, get this stuff to preserve it? That's what's frustrating. I mean, you you got someone like Frank Zappa, and I saw some video on him once where he's got this humidity-controlled vault with thousands and thousands of audio and videotapes preserving everything the right way it should be done. And it's like he's got a box of 25 videos or audios or whatever it is, and there's a good chance that they're all gone. Yeah, uh, yeah I, that is yeah. A, it's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I tried... And I gave it the attempt, and it didn't happen. And you know, it is what it is. That's all you can do. Yeah, that's all you can do. Yep. So, so now we've got another. The next photo here looks like you holding the Budokan guitar. That's the Budokan guitar. Yep. That was uh, photos that we uh, we took when we actually sold the guitar, and okay. uh, that's the guitar that actually they, they made a replica of Gibson did and released about a year year or two ago. And uh, that's the one, man. That's the that's the holy grail of guitars, as far as Ace Frehley. I mean, that's so, so this is Budokan seventy seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what what year Les Paul that is? I believe that was a seventy. It's a seventy four or seventy five. Okay. Uh, I know he, he. I know he said he he used it on uh, starting on Rock and Roll Over. So from Rock and Roll Over up to Love Gun to the solo record uh, up until Anomaly, he was using that record. That that was his number one. That was his number one guitar. Yeah. And and, th cool. and then next we got a couple pictures which look like a uh, uh, kind of a display of various items just laid out. There's there's some boxing gloves. A boxing yeah. gloves from Casablanca, um, just a variety of cool stuff. And again, the, the the coolest stuff was always the stuff from the seventies. You know, any anything <laughs> that came from a, a coin and his people. That that's what all the cool stuff was. Yeah, there's a, a Kiss Canadian Tour seventy seven pennant. Ben, yeah, pennant. A yeah. Dynasty cassette. But what did the boxing gloves represent? I mean, why would they give them boxing gloves? Was it was I'm, the I'm, fight for the solo albums. I maybe <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, no, it was just it was just random stuff that was given to Ace, and that he would just grab and throw in his uh, in his you know in his basement. Maybe the label said, "Here, Ace, put these on and go meet with Gene." <laughs> maybe maybe there was going to be Kiss boxers. I mean, we we have a Kiss wrestler, so maybe there was going to be some Kiss boxers back in the seventies. Maybe. You know? um, okay. And um, then then let's let's skip down a little. There's there's Ace sitting on a blue couch. With a guitar and a case, is that yeah? The that, that's 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 my place. Yeah, that's here in San Francisco, and and um, he would come out here uh, quite often. We had some great meetings over at uh, iTunes at, at Apple headquarters here in in, uh, in the Bay Area. Um, we did some some press out here and and for for anomaly, and you know there was. Look, the, the the momentum was rolling. Uh, obviously, like I said, I'm, I'm very proud of that record. Uh, debuted at 27 on Billboard. His 78 solo record debuted at 26 back in 78. Uh, great record. The fans, great reaction to it. And we worked really hard. I mean, we worked, worked really hard to get the word out, as well as the folks over at Rocket Science. Um, they did a great job um, to, to get the word out and get the fans excited about uh, Ace coming back. Yeah, and you know you were you at the time you were in direct competition with Sonic Boom from Kiss. So the fact that he was able to still sell records when actual kiss had something going on is a testament to the the work you did i think it, it, it helped actually it helped both parties that right. that uh that uh, the uh the records are coming out at almost at the same time i think right. we were like three weeks before sonic boom um the great thing that we had was we had uh there was and then <coughs> four four different versions of anomaly there was the, the regular version there was the best buy version that had um the foil, like a live, like yep. a double platinum. That was the whole idea. And my idea was m memory money. You know, let, let's go back to the fans. Let's, see, let's give this to the fans. Let's do something cool for them. Uh, the Walmart version had uh, a tattoo inside, just like the, a live two did. You know, the little scratch off tattoos that you can put on. Um, just fun stuff. You know, the Best Buy one sold out, completely sold out. Uh, and the Walmart one did was sitting alongside the Sonic Boom. There's the there's the tattoo. tattoo. Um, sitting alongside Sonic Boom at Walmart. You know, I would I would go into these WalMarts and look and see if we were got good placement. And and you know the guys who were there uh, placing the the CD would place Anomaly next to Sonic Boom. So we did really well. I mean, really really well. And and the, the, 
you know, again, it's, what, a, it's, it's a great uh, great record for the fans. And uh, I think we did a, uh, Frank, Frank, what's the story of the guitar that's here with Ace? Is there anything special about this guitar, or is it just someone who had bought a autographed so, guitar? Someone who had bought he was he, he had he had a lot of the uh, the Gibson um, when I guess it was during the reunion tour he had a deal with Gibson and he had these Ace Fairly models made with the headstock with his face on it. Um, I believe he had one through I believe twelve, and uh, he just wanted to get rid of them. You know, okay. he just okay. wanted to sell them. And that that's what we did. You know, we, we a lot of collectors out there, I mean, people who are watching this right now, are, are sitting there with, with Ace's guitar, and he would sign the cases to all of them. I mean, very cordial with people, would take photos with them and stuff like that. So, uh, uh, so so so, and, and, and you had mentioned um, uh, debuting at twenty seven. The next photo is of a cake. That's over in New York at the Red head, Sony Red headquarters. Uh, they had a little party for him uh, for the debut of the record and how well it did and and. Um, uh, I believe we we did that during uh, in between doing press. We went and did uh, XM radio. Uh, we did uh, just a bunch of different stuff uh, out there. Uh, Eddie Trunk show. Eddie, who is a huge supporter, obviously of Ace, and he yep. still is, uh, really pushed the record and really gave it. Uh, you know, helped it. I mean, every, everybody, every little bit helped. It wasn't a uh, a fluke that we that we did so well. Well, so why no tour? Well, th there was a tour. He did a tour. Um, uh, Why should we phrase that? Why didn't he go to more markets? Because, like, I'm in Minneapolis, and every time he comes here, he does right. fantastic. Right. And and that was disappointing for me as a fan. I wanted to see him come out on the road and do some of the new songs and, you know, get out there and see us again. Yeah, I mean, there was a tour, but it was, like, 20 dates. I mean, he didn't do Canada. He didn't go to Europe. I mean, he... he we really didn't I, do much. I, I will. I would have to say that the the only real anomaly show was at the Viper Room in L.A. That was the first right. show that we did. Okay, uh, it was great. Uh, we had uh, George Lopez introduce him at the beginning. Slash came up and did Cold Gin with him at the end. Uh, the place, you know, we sold it out in like, five minutes or something like. There was a line down the, around the block. Can, can you tell us about the set list you were working on for but, that? Well, oh, and, and that that was the other thing. You know, when we were working on set lists, we, we were saying like, Ace, I've seen you over the years coming through town. And, you know, you open the show with Rip It Out, and you do New York Groove, and obviously you got to do New York Groove and stuff like that because that's a, well, your biggest hit. Um, but I said, you know, let's, let's, let's do something, uh, let's do um, something for the fans, for the core fans, you know, who, who want to come out there. And, and now in the age of Facebook and Twitter, uh, the, the word gets out that he's, he's doing different stuff. Anyway, long story short, uh, we rehearsed tomorrow and tonight from a live two, never played before. Um, the problem with that is he couldn't learn to solo, couldn't get the solo down. Uh, and uh, Derek Hawkins was showing him how the solo went, and he just couldn't get it. So, uh, you know, he wasn't singing the song. Scott Coogan was singing the song. We also were working on uh, Escape from the Island and um, Dark Light from The Elder. Um, we had two, two Sides of the Coin, I believe, uh, was another one. Just throwing stuff out there just to do some cool stuff that, that the yeah. fans would get excited about. And it wouldn't be the same routine, you know. You again, and but it, it was just hard. I mean, Ace has never been a guy to really rehearse, and um, it, it never came to be. I wish I had a video camera while while we were rehearsing, though, because you know we, they did actually played the songs. I mean, the, oh, that would they neat. tried. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of video, so let let's let's jump and uh, talk a little bit about this video clip that you um, provided us with. Well, the, we got to give thanks to uh, to uh, Dave Stryker, a friend of mine out in, in the East Coast, who is a um, keeps a lot of Kiss videos. is is, is a great uh, huge fan, huge, huge fan. fan, archivist of a lot of this video stuff. He shot the uh, New York Steel show back in two thousand and one. Uh, and and, and, and let, let's just be clear: when when we're saying he shot, it wasn't just him as a fan coming in there bootlegging and shooting it. He was. Requested, he was yep. given permission and requested to come in there and do a multiple camera pro shot. Yes, and I believe the the one that was released uh, is he shot the uh, the headliners that night, which was Twisted Sister, and I, I believe that that was that's the one that, that was released a couple of years ago or something like yeah. that. So it's the same same camera angle, same everything like that. And and uh, I, again, game plan was why don't for bonus why don't we put a bonus DVD on Europe Anomaly with the New York Steel show. Why don't we put That'd a bonus awesome. DVD of, uh, you know, there's a, there a ton of Ace shows throughout the years during the Bad Boys tour, uh, during the, his Just for Fun tours in 93, 94. Why don't we put them out there? 
I played him for Ace. Um, he wasn't really proud of it as far as his uh, performance. I mean, obviously, during that time, he was using. And, um, you know, his, his word as far as the New York Steel was, uh, you know, I look pasty. I don't, wanna, I don't want people to see that, uh, see me in that light. So, you know, those videos have never uh, seen the light of day. So, Any thought of making these videos, like, you know, just putting out a live album, a live CD, and just use the actual audio from, from these shows? Again, it was thrown at the table, and uh, okay. for one reason or another, I mean, again, I, look, I, I know I can tell you one thing about Ace is he, he was definitely not proud of his time when he was using, and that was pretty much everything from 2007, you know, behind. I mean, it was... It, he looks at some of the photos, he remembers what he was doing, and he wasn't proud of it, you know, and, and he was really proud of his, he's really proud of his sobriety, and, and um, you know, I know he's, he's kept up with it, and it is what it is. I mean, so, so, so his sobriety starts in 2007, then? Yeah, I mean, he, I, I, he, the story is he fell off the wagon in 2006 during that uh, VH1 Honors thing that he was doing with, uh, with Rob Zombie and stuff. I guess, the, you know, after the show, they went and partied, and fell off the wagon, and, you know, he's been back on, but I got to say, you know, I mean, I don't want to turn this into a, 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 a Dr. Drew thing. And that might right. be a segue for the Dr. No. Drew photo. Uh, but, uh, you know, working with, working with a lot of uh, acts and, and artists and stuff uh, in the music industry, uh, there are a lot of addicts out there, you know. And I, I can tell you right now, Ace will be the first one to admit that he is an addict. And if you know anybody in your family or friends and, and, and who, who are addicts, you know, it's not something that you, you're cured from. And I, I truly believe, you know, throughout his years in KISS, where he's either abusing alcohol or, or pills or, or drugs or anything like that, um, during the time of Anomaly, he got addicted to finishing the record. And maybe I just caught him at the right time, but he was, during the making of Anomaly, he was fantastic. I mean, he would like, oh, we would say, what time do you want to get started in the morning? 9 a.m. He would show up at the studio with, at 9 a.m. with Dunkin' Donuts, coffee, ready to go. I mean, Gene and Paul would have been so... They wouldn't have believed it. I, I tell people about that who know Ace. I, I talked to Eddie Kramer about it, and couldn't believe it. Like, he showed up, he was ready to go, ready to sing, ready to play guitar, and that's why that record got done and why that record sounds so good. You know do you, I mean? Do you, do you think it's within Ace to do another record? Uh, again, it, it's the focus. If he wanted to focus his time and energy... Um, you know, there's a lot of things that happened toward the end of the of the mix of that record. Um, he hooked up with his current girlfriend at the time, and uh, again, it's, addiction comes in many ways. You know, you could be addicted to sex, you could be addicted to plastic surgery, you could be addicted to whatever. He's addicted to women. Obviously, I mean that that's one of the things that he had and and and, and has. And and once he started uh, seeing this girl, I couldn't get him out of the hotel room. Couldn't get him out of uh, you know. It's like. Ace, we have to. We have an 11 a.m. call. We have to go just knocking on this door. It wouldn't wouldn't get out of the, out of bed. So, yeah, uh, it is what it is. It's an old story. Uh, you know, history repeats itself. And uh, I had a conversation with Gene about it as well. And you know, it, look, I wish the guy well. I hope I hope he uh, he does something else. But I just besides doing these uh, the monster conventions where he goes and signs autographs for 40 bucks a pop, I, I don't know what else he can do. So, yeah. so, so before we uh, wrap things up here and, and run the video for everybody to see, why don't you just fill us in sort of what, what you've been doing. You've got, actually, and there's one more bonus photo we're going to throw up here at the very sure. end as well. So tell us about this bonus photo and, and a couple of the projects you've been working on. All right, which photo are we looking at? The, the black, the black oh, guitar. Okay, yeah, the, the black guitar. Oh, well. One of the things that we I found at uh, in Ace's place was the Black Beauty Les Paul that was used on the uh, the smoking guitar that was used on the Dynasty and Unmasked tours. And, and you, you guys are taking a look at photos right now of that guitar of Ace Frehley in his Dynasty costume. In the Dynasty costume, that was it, and uh, ended up selling that guitar to a uh, a collector out in Los Angeles, and um, had the guitar. Uh, remodeled, not remodeled, let's say, but it works. It was in crappy condition. It was literally sitting in its original case. Uh, it's been fixed up. It's been refurbished. It smokes. It uh, it can play. It, it looks great. And uh, as of about a week ago, the the guy who wanted to who bought it 
actually wants to sell it. So there is uh, somebody out there who, uh, and, and it's not cheap, let me tell you. I mean, we're talking high five figures. Uh, anybody who wants to uh, inquire about it can go to my website, which is funkrock.com. And maybe we can put that up there. Yeah, I'll put that up uh, as well. Can you, yeah, uh, I was just going to say, yeah, make sure we get well, it spell, up there. Spell it out as well so people who yeah. well, understand the well, audio. I'll do one better. Well, this, is, this is backwards. Huh? There you go. No, that's perfect. 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 Yeah, that's perfect. Go to the website, hit contact, email me. Again, serious in inquiries only um, as far as if, if you want to talk about it. Maybe somebody in Australia out there who saw Kiss on the uh, Unmasked tour would like to get a piece of, uh, of, of the history there. And, and it's, a, it's a really cool guitar, and uh, it's up for sale. Yeah. So, so we, we, I think we mentioned real briefly, I mean, your, your association with Metallica, but you were uh, deeply involved in Jason's new, Jason Newstead's yeah, new yeah. project. Great record. Another record I'm really proud of. It's, it's still on the charts on iTunes. Uh, it's called it's Metal. fantastic, by the way. I, 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 I bought it, and it's fantastic. Uh, again, same com concept that I wanted to do with, with Anomaly, which is, look, uh, at the end of the game, the fans, what, you know what Gene has always said, the fans are the bosses. They rule. Yeah. They're the ones who are putting the shell out the, their hard-earned money. Uh, let's give them something that they want. And being in the Metallica camp, uh, throughout the years, I was there in the recording of St. Anger, uh, there with the recording of Death Magnetic. Um, you know, the hardcore, there's no more hardcore fans out there than Metallica or Kiss fans. I mean, we're talking... Uh, I'd say Dream really, Theater fans. Dream, well, okay. <laughs> As of today, Dream Theater fans are pretty Kiss hardcore. Kiss and Metallica, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 as far as, you know, I mean, as far as idol worship, I think Kiss is number one. I mean, I, it's one thing I always remember, you know, when I was a kid, my mom would take me to these ladies' houses that would have all the Jesus uh, statues and Mary statues in there, and then I'd go into, like, a Kiss fan's house, and it's, like, the same thing, you know, except it's Gene and Paul, and, and it just covered bathroom, right. kitchen. Mitch, is that your house? I mean, is that kind of like yeah. your place? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Come on, Mitch, admit it. Literally, I mean, you... I've you, only you, got him. You only got or, him? Okay, great. But it, it, <laughs> as far as idol worship, I think Kiss is number one. You know, yeah, I mean, you really got, the, you got the Beatles and Elvis and and uh, and uh, outside of America, I mean, Queen is is huge. But as right. far it's a different as different kind of fandom, though, the very yeah. different kind. Absolutely, Kiss is definitely number one when it comes to to, to to the hardcore fans who do those expos and the conventions and stuff like that. Yeah, so, it, um, Kiss is a lifestyle, whereas the other ones it's just bands you like. You know, right? right if that right. makes any sense. So getting back, you know, getting back to the, the Jason Newstead thing is, is you know, I look back at the, the records that sold and, and what fans loved mostly. And, and the, the two records that came out were uh, the Black Album and Justice for All. So we based the recording of that record on those records and, and try to capture that flavor and that style and that blueprint of what, what made it happen. And, and the fan you reaction. nailed it. The fan reaction has been incredible. So very you proud of that it. record. And if, you know, go to iTunes and, and pick it up. Or, or go to Jason's website, which is uh, NewsteadHeavyMetal.com, and uh, get an autographed copy. And, 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 yeah. I, and I think... And you know, read the interview I did with him. And, and it might be worth mentioning, <laughs> too, because, Frank, you and I chatted about this a while ago. Yeah. Jason's actually a big Kiss fan. Huge Kiss fan. Huge Kiss fan. Um, he actually had the, the, the poster on his wall uh, of, of the band when he was a kid. And, and the stories that he tells me was uh, he wanted to be Ace Fraley, but the, but the rest of the kids in his, in his uh, neighborhood, uh, they needed a bass player. So he ended up being the Gene guy and ended up playing bass, and the rest is uh, metal history. So there you go. He's a there big, big kiss. Every, everything comes back to kiss one way or another. It's, it's yeah. One way or another, absolutely. Before we wrap up, Mike, are, are we doing a second installment because of the picture here with Alice Cooper that I sort of wanted well, to yeah, have? So I, I tell you what, let's let's throw that in real quick, Frank. That that okay. that's interesting. So Sorry. We'll, we'll, let me bring up this picture of uh, Alice Cooper and Ace Fraley. What looks like they're they're rehearsing for something. That is, um, it was a benefit for a rehab house in Boston. In that was April of two thousand nine, I believe. Uh, Alice was a headliner. Uh, Ace came in and did a few songs. Uh, Will Lee played uh, bass, who was on, on Ace's solo record. Uh, Chad Smith from the Peppers was on uh, drums. Great night. Uh, it was really fun. Um, I guess the highlight for me was the encore was going to be rock and roll all night uh, with Ace and Alice sharing uh, lead vocals. vocals. And, and oh, I gotta tell cool. you, they had they had for, well, Alice didn't know the, the lyrics. And Ace 
had forgotten the lyrics as well. So during <laughs> during that photo, doesn't this? I mean, as a, as a fan, you're just like, what? Well, Ace like, really forgot it. I mean, okay, maybe Alice doesn't know it, but still, you're like, how does anybody not know that? Literally, yeah. literally, right. the, the second that photo after that photo was taken, um, Alice was looking up on his iPhone the lyrics, and he in, he has bad eyesight, obviously, and could, couldn't read it. So I grabbed a piece of paper and I started writing down the verses to Rock and Roll All Night. And as we rehearsed, uh, I would hold up the uh, the lyrics to Alice. You were, the tel- you were the teleprompter. I was the teleprompter. Right. The, human, the human teleprompter. Cue right. card guy. <laughs> Fun guy. I mean, and, and as you know, when you're working and you're in the middle of doing all that stuff, you don't really think about it. But afterwards, I kind of was like, "Wow, you know, I just I was right in front of Alice and, and Ace as they're singing Rock and Roll All Night." I'm, kind I'm, of fe- like, I'm feeding the lyrics to Alice Cooper and Ace Fraley for Rock and Roll All Night. Is this kind of surreal? Very surreal. A little bit surreal. Any Very videotape surreal. of that night, or or, or yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. I believe it's on YouTube. I, I video. Oh, I, I actually videoed the the show, so I believe it's still on. If you go to Ace's uh, website, it might it might still be on there. It might okay. still be. On there. Yeah. Cool. Very great cool. version. Great version of New York Groove uh, with backup singers, and a great version of, uh, version of Shock Me too. So cool stuff. Very so, cool stuff. so so Frank, I mean, there's a lot more photos we didn't get to here. And, and on top of it, there's a lot of stories uh, just related to Anomaly, the songs of Anomaly, the recording yeah. of Anomaly. I'm wondering if, if you would be open at some time in the future, sure. sitting down and yeah, sharing let's, let's some definitely stories go, again. Go through, through the photos sometime and, again, yeah, sitting down and go through them, yeah. Love it. It's, 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 it's fun stories. It's fun. I, I love to hear behind-the-scenes stuff of other records that, I, that, you know, that I'm a fan of. And how it was made, and, and how it could have changed, and it could have been different. And um, you know, I mean, it's a it's a great record, and, and like I said, uh, I'm 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 glad the fans really dug it, and uh, I dug it as well. So yeah, well, this, cool. I, I this has been awesome. I love I love the stories, and and quite honestly, the whole concept of of three sides of the coin is just us sitting down and talking like a bunch of fans. You know, this is just like when I was over at your place, you know, a week yeah. ago, Frank. It's just, yeah. you know, we're sitting sitting in your living room bullshitting. Well, here we are. We're sitting here bullshitting, but we're recording it, and the rest of the fans can join in and be, part, and be part of this. Be part because of this, I mean, this is what we're hearing from so many fans is this is what they do, and they love the fact that they can take part with us in this type of discussion. It's It's not the tearing somebody apart and ripping somebody down no. and you know we're just talking like a bunch of fans would talk if you hung out in a bar one night for three hours absolutely absolutely and, it, and it's you know it's, it's just fun to, to 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 kind of reminisce about how these things this thing we got made and and just the the character of ace Frehley. i mean he's definitely a character you know i mean he's definitely uh in in rock history he's up there you know i always yeah. attributed kiss when i was you know when i got a little older and i kind of met everybody uh, you know, Gene and Paul were the Beatles guys, and uh, Peter and Ace were the, the Stones guys. You know, they always got in trouble. They were the bad guy, the bad boys, drinking and, and doing their thing and racing cars and crashing cars. And, you know, Gene and Paul were more of the business guys. And, you know, as the years go by, you can kind of see where it all ended up. You know, I mean, Gene yep. and Paul have the empire, and good for them. They, they, they worked hard on it, and, and they deserve it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've many times people have asked me during my time working with the band, you know, what did I think of Ace? Have I met Ace? And and there's one story that just kind of paints the picture of Ace Fraley for me. And it was, I think it was during the farewell tour in Reno, Nevada. Yeah. I'm walking down the ramp. This is like four in the afternoon, five in the afternoon, walking down the ramp backstage. And if you've been backstage, you know, typically there's just road cases just lined up everywhere. Mm-hmm. And around that time... There might just be roadies hanging around because the stage has been set up. It's kind of, you know, downtime. So it's not uncommon to see somebody just crashed sleeping on a road case. Right. Because they sleep wherever they can. They rest right. wherever they can. I'm walking down the ramp, and out of the corner of my eye, I see this guy just laying laying out on a road case. And I, as I walk by, I hear that cackle. And I turn, and it's Ace. He's like, hey, Was Mike. He- it was was he in, was he in makeup? No, not in makeup, <laughs> <laughs> not in makeup yet. But I was just it, that moment just hit me. It's like Gene and Paul are probably backstage talking to a promoter, cutting a deal. Absolutely. And here's Ace Fraley, the rock star, the rock star, just 
chilling on the road case, just waiting for someone to tell him what to do. It's just like, that's Ace. That's yeah, not. I, it's not good. That's not bad. That is what Ace is. Yeah. I I asked Ace about the famous dynasty. I mean, a destroyer story about uh, you know Dick Wagner doing his uh, the, the the solo on Sweet Pain and, and how that came about. And you know, I mean, he wasn't really. He didn't feel like. It wasn't like he was upset about it. He's matter of fact. Hey, listen, I had a card game that night. <laughs> I had to win a semi. There, there you go, Mitch. <laughs> it, 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 it wasn't Bob Ezrin's fault. Yes, it was. Well, it was the guys at the card game. It was look, a card game. Look, Bob had a job. It was organized by Bob. Yeah. <laughs> there you to go. Keep Ace away. <laughs> Maybe Bob Here had a, a Pink Floyd record next month or something. He just had to get uh, through the record. I mean, I mean, it's a you know, just matter of factly. He just. Like I said, I, I, got, I, had a, I had a card game I had to go to. And yet, with the new remaster of that album, Ace's solo exists. So, oh, yes, yeah. I, I mean, I like know. I said, I, I wonder what other gems are out there that you know, nobody's heard of. I mean, I, I wish they would make a, a quintessential box set of just the real, real raw stuff that... that yeah. It's all, it's I just like want to have Girl Can't Dance by Ace on an official <laughs> CD cleaned up and sounding beautiful. Well, you, you know what would be the... the the ideal box set is not to have Kiss put together the box set, but no, have it's... each band member go to each band member and say, all right, you need to put together a Peter Chris box set, an Ace Frehley box set, a Paul Stanley, a Gene Simmons, 50 tracks. Right. right. And you are allowed to put and pick and pull from whatever you've got to put it on there. Take those four those four releases, put it together, and now you've got the Kiss box set. Right. One of my favorite songs that have, has never been released by Gene and Paul is that uh, Long, Long Road. I guess it was recorded right. in 72. Unbelievable song. I, I, that should have been on the box set. I mean, great stuff. I think it's something that, the, again, fans who've never heard it would hear it and would love it. You know, so. Well, yeah, I guess a lot of it has to do with legalities and rights, but that aside, it would be great to have this stuff. Yeah, Absolutely. It, it, it would be cool. But, hey, Frank, this has been awesome. Thanks for having um, me, guys. Listen, everybody go check out frunkrock.com. Yeah. Just take a look at what Frank's been doing. If you're interested in the, in the black guitar, you know, drop him a note. Um, and email, email, please. E email, email, email. Yeah, email me, and, and, and uh, I'll get back but to you. And, and like I said, serious inquiries only. This isn't something for the casual fan. And be yeah, respectful it, it, of his time. Don't email him all kinds of questions about anomaly and all that. He's yeah, busy. It, it's it's the uh, you know like I said if there's a collector out there who would really like the guitar to have in his case or to play or, or wherever an investment I mean this is an investment absolutely right. this is this is a rock and roll hall of fame piece you know I mean it's the guitar that was used on uh, on Dynasty and Unmask so um, there you go all right Drop Frank all right. thanks so much for joining us we thank will thank you we'll, Frank we'll circle back and schedule a return visit sometime in the near future great awesome, awesome. thanks you guys thank, thank you thank you take care thank you.
gentlemen, man. Good night. So, mice, men, Ace's storage locker. Did you learn anything about Ace Fraley out of that one, Tommy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that says a lot, just that reaction. Oh, God. I don't know it's what just, Tommy it's... learned, but it seems that the stories that Gene and Paul have told uh, are, are true. <laughs> well, yeah, and the worst part for me of this whole thing is to think of all that audio and video that might have just been washed away by a flood. You know, in all the years of it sitting in a humid, you know, climate where the the tapes just Mold fall apart. And mildew and must and you, yeah, yeah and, and, I, and I don't think fans can appreciate two inch tape if that's not stored in sort of this hermetically sealed climate it control. It cracks and falls. It cracks. Off. You got you got to stick it in an oven and bake it. And, I mean, it, it's it turns to dust essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And it's unusable, so you have all these tracks. And I mean, the fact that it was not digitized, as soon as CDs got invented, somebody should have carted those boxes into a studio and said, you know, whatever amount, you know, here's $10,000 or $3,000, put this on a digital file for me. And, and, you know, so the only thing I can say is I hope Bob Ezrin, I hope Gene Simmons, I hope Paul Stanley have kept this stuff and it's not lost for us forever. I got to you know? imagine Kiss, the stuff that Kiss has right. is well taken care of. Right. right. So like the, the, stu the, 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 the stuff have. that falls into an individual band member's own possession is up for anybody's guess based on the stories we just heard about Ace. Right. Uh -huh. So the Fraley's Comet stuff, probably gone for good, but I'm assuming that the Elder stuff must be kept somewhere in a pristine Well, the final, the fi the final masters are probably in, in a label vault. The right. dem the right. demos are probably in somewhere Gene's vault. Uh, probably Gene, come on, Gene's right. very meticulous. No, no, no. You're you're right. I mean, Kiss has their own warehouse. We've talked about this. They've got their right. own warehouse. I'm sure it's very well organized, climate controlled, secure. Um, Gene knows there's value in there. Right. So anyway, I found that extremely <laughs> interesting. The stories Frank told us were really just like. I could see Ch Tommy's jaw just dropping every once in a while, just going, "What? What? No! It just no!" Kills me. God. That's what kept it, Tommy so quiet. But I mean, it's sort of expected. You just really want to shake him and go, "What? You know?" That's where but Tommy's I, I, like, "I'll I, go work for free. Let me do that for you." You know, but it's not just Ace. I've been, to, and I'm not going to name names, but I've been to different rock star houses that have had, you know, platinum albums on the wall and stuff. And then they have the gold album from Japan sitting, you know, on the floor in the kitchen, and and they've got some a box of demo tapes lying in this cardboard box underneath the bed, and it's it's not something I haven't seen before. It's just well, that I guess they don't put the same value to it that a crazy fan so, does. So, so let let's put it into a different perspective. We think because they're a musician, they're going to be super meticulous, super organized, super careful. But they're just like any of us. And if we all right. looked around our house right now, there's probably something sitting against a wall or stacked up on a shelf somewhere where sure. you've been meaning to put it away for the last six months. All the DVDs yeah. in this room are stacked up on the side of the TV, and they're, they're gathering dust, and I know I should put them away, but... I mean, to, well, that, yeah. that, that, that's what it comes down to. I mean, to us, we, look, we, we look at that musician's music tapes as treasure as gold to us but to them yeah, I mean, it's, look, just, it's I, just another pile of audio tape i, I, I just got the yeah, pile I know. of I just, cds landing here that should be going somewhere and they just sit there so but that should have been the very first thing that was taken care of the very first thing from that's a fan's just, perspective though. from a fan's perspective i mean from, that's I, know, I know perspective he, he plays guitar 24 hours a day if it disappears he'll just Play it again. Listen, I, 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 you know, I've got a storage locker downstairs that's filled with like twenty boxes of Kiss collectibles. It's just mixed up, piled up, stacked up. Yeah. And and I, you know, I've been meaning for three and a half years to get down there and photograph, inventory it, organize it, 
And I'm sure there's another fan out there sitting there going right now, are you fucking nuts? Yeah, listen, I, I got a Look, whole bunch get, of... Get down there right now and do something about it. I mean, I've got exclusive posters, promotional posters that I put on press board and stuff. When I repainted, I stuck them in the laundry room, except I repainted in 2006. They're, they're still, still in the laundry they're room. still behind the dryer, gathering... Well, they, essentially, that's where they are. I mean, you know... Yeah, it's just it's it's. It's, I don't it's, know. it's a shock, is what it is. It's it's something that you don't. But it's human. Think. It's human. That's the point. It's human, but to us as fans, it's uh, it's a shock to see that stuff is taken care of like that. The mm-hmm. biggest shock to me, though, is music. I mean, that's what I really collect, and to know that there's other versions, even of elder songs, that eventually I could hear, and maybe now I can't because somebody didn't take care of it. That's where it really sort of irritates me. But. That's my point exactly right there. You know, it's like, come on, really? I, you know, I don't care if he doesn't care about the gold records or any of that, but it's. There, can I can't believe there wasn't somebody that came along somewhere between 1981 and now that said, you know, dude, I'll take care of this for you. We'll get it taken care of. We'll get everything digitized. But Frank, we'll said everything. But, but Frank, but Frank did say he wanted to do that. It, you know, he didn't want to. You can't. You can't. Them. You can't make a person do it if they don't want to True. do it. Yeah, well, I know. It you just... can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Yeah. yeah. True. Yeah. So, and, uh, yeah, you know, to know that there's an LA Forum 77 videotape lying around and we've had three kissologies and no mention of it well, it drives me crazy. That's and that's the worst that. part because that could very well be the only copy. Yeah. You know? I, you know? Because back then, people didn't think of collectibles. They said, oh, well, here, you take the copy home when you're done. Bring it back to me. And if it never came back, that's it. Oh, well. Yep. Oh, well, Mike. Yep. So, so what, what, what homework do we have out of this? What is your favorite Ace collectible? Perhaps. Mm. Um, How do you feel about losing all those masters? <laughs> well, I think the answer is going to be the same on that. Fuck. Everyone's going to say that sucks. Did you like the episode with Tommy not talking as much? <laughs> I'd, I'd like to know what, what people have that is their favorite Ace Fraley collectible. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a good one. I mean, because we, ju- we just talked about a whole bunch of Ace collectibles. So what, what do you have that is really important to you? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully we'll get Frank on again, like we said, and, and do a part two, because as you can, you and I know, or all three of us know, we have, we went through maybe one fourth of the pictures yeah. that he sent yeah, us. Yeah, there's a lot more <laughs> yeah. pictures, so. and there's a lot of questions that he, stories he can tell just about the recording of Anomaly. Right. Yeah. So we're going to have to do a two, another part to this. At some point in time. So, so hit us up, threesidesofthecoin.com. Facebook.com slash three sides of the coin. Let us know what your favorite case collectible is. Leave us your comments about this show. Um, and I guess that's it. Until next week. That's all, folks. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>